Welcome back here with Channel 199, Advocates Manny Witts and Kanye Jele, former Judge Chris Greenland are my guests here in the studio. Now, Manny, you've got the Criminal Procedure Act. In fact, before I get to you reading that, Kanye, I want to ask you, we had the decision by Judge Masi, but the order only gets handed down three court days later. What happens now in the intervening time? There are a couple of arrangements that need to be made and these are arrangements that the prosecution and the defense team are going to be making in consultation with each other. They involve a number of things. First, the panel. The panel of psychiatrists and clinical psychologists that's going to be responsible for putting together the report that's going to be done. Who is it going to be? Right. Where is this going to take place? Then one needs to structure and that would be something that would be done uh, in consultation between the, 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 the teams, what, ref what is going to be contained in the referral? So who is this person that they're referring? Why are they referring that person? Who, whose evidence and or interview might be necessary in order to make their report? And also, what exactly is it that the court wants them to look at? Okay. These are the kinds of things that need to be detailed mm -hmm. and that are the basis for the referral going forward. So who drops this order then? They're going to do a, a joint order, but it's really the, pro the person who referred. And it's really the prosecutor. So he he made the application. He's got, to, he's got to draft it. He'll, he'll draft the order, but he'll have Barry Roo's input. He'll have Barry Roo's input, but the input will only probably come in regards to the panel, whether it includes psychologists. They did make mention they might want psychologists. The Department of Health has got a list of various medical professionals that either work there permanently or volunteer their services at the mental hospitals. But don't forget it's a court order. So Correct. if the judge looks at this long order on Tuesday and goes, ah, I'm not happy with this formulation, I'm not sure that this issue should be uh, inserted here or formulated in this way, sh she's in a so position to do that. So, so we might have some discussion on Tuesday. It's not no, a slam I, dunk. Chris? I think it's more fundamental than that. It's her order. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. She has to be satisfied with the terms of the order. But she, but she is guided now by the Criminal Procedure the criminal Act. Procedure it, Act. It seems to be quite detailed, yeah, Manny. It's very, very detailed. It sets out exactly what you have to refer. Mm -hmm. And it also says, give us the names of relatives, friends, people that might be able to assist. You can interview them. You can also set out who the people are on the panel. In other words, normally the medical superintendent of the hospital concerned, um, a psychiatrist that is appointed by the state, and a psychiatrist that the court can appoint. And I'm sure the defense would obviously want to appoint their own psychiatrist and probably get the assistance of Meryl Forster. What's but there's a, there's a problem here. Okay, sorry, what's, we'll come to that problem. What's interesting is another factor that needs to be taken into account in the referral is they have to to, to uh, highlight the stage of at which proceedings are currently. Correct. This makes it clear it's not a fluke, this doesn't happen only once in a blue moon, that this kind of referral takes place when you're already in the middle of criminal proceedings, just so people can appreciate that, because it's actually provided for in the Criminal Procedure Act that the state at which proceedings have reached is relevant in, in that particular referral. Okay, what's the problem, Manny? Oh, there's two problems. The other problem is you've also got to set out, according to the Act, the prosecutor and the court must make an order and say, I want you to specifically examine sane automatism. Was it a sane automatism or not? Is it diminished responsibility? What is it? Is there a mental illness or is it just a mental disorder? You tell us what it is from your own consultations and expertise. The problem is what happens to Mr. Pistorius. Okay. Does, because, is it detailed in the Criminal Procedure well, Act? The, if you look at the Act, what happens to him, he actually effectively goes into custody. And okay. he's either in custody of the hospital, and I think, uh, as my colleagues will tell you, Unfortunately, when it comes to that, you don't just, it's not like phoning Netcare and asking for an admission or pre admission and authorize it. Beds are oversubscribed, I've heard. A little yeah. bit oversubscribed. That's and you, we were and you a discussion. discussion. You can wait a because year, two years. I understood that custody. there was an option. I, went, I understood that the outpatient option was actually in, ingrained in law. Now, Mani's got a lot more experience than me. He says not, but then there's a fundamental problem. This if the outpatient mm. option is provided, then somebody's getting preferential treatment. They are people who have been waiting for quite some time. Uh, some of money uh, They can't be shown, be seen to be giving Oscar Pistorius preferential exactly. and, treatment. And apparently it can take up to two years to find a bed in order to have that kind of evalu evaluation take place. And some people are waiting whilst not out on bail. Uh, and, and so and, they won't say extend his bail and say until the well, bed becomes available well, you're out the, on the bail. The specifically that wherever you are sent to, you're in their custody. So if you're at Vescopies, which covers Pretoria, or Sturkfontein, which is the other hospital that normally does these assessments, what happens is you're in their custody. No freedom of movement. 
you abide by their rules and regulations. And it works very, very simply. If you're going voluntarily, then you can go as an outpatient if you ask to be assessed. This is involuntary. Yes, he didn't he ask to be referred. He opposed yeah. it. So if it's involuntary, no matter how much you want to assist him, you look at all the people that have been waiting, as my colleagues say, months, years. Why do you suddenly get preference? Why does your bed, because of who you are and because it's a, it's a high-profile trial, why do you suddenly become ahead of the queue? And it's not just the bed. Beds, you can find beds. You've got to find the psychiatrists and the panel to evaluate you. And you can even get a bed and you can still sit there for months before they get round to you. The, uh, our, our prisons are clogged. The, the hospitals Absolutely. are clogged. Absolutely. The waiting trial prisons the waiting are clogged. Trial. The you, you don't even get a look in. But Chris, do you think that the, the judge would have a discretion here that to say, I extend his bail... Um, and until such time as a, a, a bed becomes available, then he must now commit himself to uh, the, the psychiatric institution. David, you'll be shocked. I actually don't know. Uh, that is a first. <laughs> that is a first. But he no, did, I, I do know. You, you, it's not a matter of extending his bail and saying, well, we'll extend bail as and when a bed becomes available. If you referred, you referred. You go on the day of the referral, which is Tuesday. And if you referred and you involuntary, you're not going in voluntarily, involuntary, Unfortunately, so, so the judge, either, either at a prison, sorry. she's trying. She's trying to assist. She said, "Well, in view of the one case, inhumane conditions, etc." We all know that it exists, unfortunately, but it's just bad luck. It's tough uh, luck. Uh, you, you, you go in, as far as I'm be concerned. This is the first example of mm. the uh, the word spef spe uh, special treatment might might be pushing it, but at the, at the same time, the reality of it is is that in many ways this trial has been unique. It's been unique not just because, for example, of the caliber of legal teams involved. It's been unique because of the fact that we actually have had, I appreciate, a few adjournments, but compared to the normal trial, not at all any adjournments. I mean, some of these trials take years yes. because mm. the judge isn't available and booked off only to take care of this particular case for most That's of right. these. That's right, and advocates uh, have got other it, things on their Exactly. Box. So we, we, we were speaking with Marnie about a particular court um, um, out in the sticks where the magistrate is available for criminal matters one day a week. And in that one day a week, that magistrate has to deal with every bail application of everybody that's been arrested in the last week before that magistrate then deals with continuing with whatever trial has been on that docket and sometimes you're going there every week non-stop for years and you go there on one particular day and her docket is completely white, whitened out by all other cases. A lot of these trials take place on that mm. level of, of, of time consuming uh, exhausting adjournments under circumstances where people are not out on bail. So this, this case has been very unique and very special for, for a lot of reasons. Unfortunately our time is up but I think what we have uh, had great insight into is a lot of other case law that would, could have been considered and might have relevance later on in this trial. Definitely. And also it makes for Tuesday, I thought it was just going to be a rubber stamping of a court order. There are going to be some very interesting questions that need to be answered and one of them is what happens now to Oscar Pistorius? Yeah. Does he, is he incarcerated? Or is, he, uh, is there some latitude that the judge could extend it? Well, the judge is trying to give latitude and saying, well, there is case law, but that was a voluntary. He yeah, is involuntary. If you're involuntary and you look at what the Criminal Procedure Act says, it's just unfortunate. You go into custody and you wait like the rest of I'm us. I'm going to give the last one for 30, 30 seconds, Chris. And David, the public in terms of social media are already raising the question as to whether Oscar is going to be accorded special treatment. They dare not. They, if the criminal justice system wants to show itself as impartial, they won't be able to do something. They'll be, they'll be very, very careful about something like that. Yes, definitely. You can't give him any special treatment. He must be treated the same as every if other person else. that's standing trial, wherever he or she is. My thanks to our legal experts, advocates Manny Witts and uh, Kanye Jele, former judge Chris Greenland as well. I'm sorry we haven't had time to get to the tweets. I do know we managed to answer a lot of the tweets in our general discussion. Following today's events in court, live programming will conclude at 10 o'clock tonight, after which we'll show a repeat of court this week through the night. Tomorrow morning from 7 a.m. to midnight, we'll feature highlights from weeks 1 to 8 of the Oscar Pistorius trial.